Undercurrents sponsored by John Hughes in Victoria Park. Choose your station before you choose your program. Absolutely. Gary, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, John. At the Court Wine Bar today? Yeah, why not? A place you're fairly familiar with? It's a real journalist establishment, the Court Wine Bar. I mean, it's died off a little bit. I think I blame the internet, but this is a real journo's pub. We'll start off with a few light-hearted questions, Gary. You have a nickname around the town in journalism as Disco. Can you explain why that is? That came about in about uh, 1992. I was at a... um, a journalist seminar we called it. It was actually a bit of a, uh, a weekend down in Pemberton for the wine festival. So it was a disco theme, there was a disco ball and I think by about 11.30 at night I might have cut loose on the dance floor. And from that day on I got named uh, Disco by one journalist and it kind of spread. You've won a number of prizes um, for your work in journalism. What would you say has been your proudest moment in journalism? There's a story I did about a baby that uh, died, a baby called Wade Scale who died in a bathtub and we took that story and we looked at other issues around it. We found that there was a massive problem within the child uh, protection um, area of Western Australia and as a result of the stories that we ran at the Western Australian, $132 million was committed by the state government to address some of the issues with uh, child protection and the negligence that was involved and so I think if I look back that's the one job. What is it you like best about the city of Perth? It's an easy place to live. It's almost a lazy type thing to say but Perth for all its faults in terms of being somewhat of a backwater and not not understanding whether they should open shops on a Sunday or on a Wednesday night or a Thursday night. I've got a couple of kids. It's a very easy place to bring up children and live. The climate's good. Uh, the cost of living's good. Um, what I hate about Perth is the controversy that arrives when anything, something different's going to happen. Choggum. Everyone sort of just shouted down the whole Choggum thing. Choggum as an organisation and what it achieves, zero. But putting it on in Perth, showing we can do it, advertising ourselves to the world, promoting ourselves to the world, I reckon it's a great thing. Um, it's just, it's the things that don't happen in Perth and don't happen fast enough that frustrate me. Perth just seems to slowly but surely get there. But, but isn't one of the good things about Perth that it is so quiet? No. And we're not overpopulated? No, 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 that's not one of the good things about Perth. Not that we're not overpopulated, but because it's quiet? No, definitely not. There just needs to be more. Um, there just needs to be more places to go. Well, what about the waterfront plan for the city of Perth? Yes, what is that? Horrendous. Horrendous. Hor- as the plans that I've seen it, absolutely horrendous. I'm surprised like, to hear you say that. Well, no, You've I'm just hor- spoken about development, now you're saying it's horrendous. I'm saying that what they're planning is horrendous. Why don't they just put markets up and invite people to come down and enjoy the foreshore without having to build cucumbers? What about and- dropping the road so that there's complete access to the yep, river? I agree with that. Yeah. Any aspirations for politics? No, I've never had any aspiration for politics. I've seen too many politicians that go into, into Parliament with great intentions and turn out to be just like the others. They do and, nothing. And, they look after their own position. Gary, you've just seen so many come and go, haven't you? But you're still in the newspaper and they're not. Yeah, I, yeah I've managed to, to hang around <laughs> like a bad smell and just... <laughs> you, you, you find that as you go on in newspapers, you can, you can kind of do things differently. You can reinvent yourself a little bit. I've been doing Inside Cover for the last year, which is a column which you know has a bit of a following whether I'll keep doing it for much longer I don't know but you know you you do those things to keep yourself interested find a way to to, to, to tackle your profession and and it works um, just one personal question if I may Gary and who has been the greatest influence on your life as a journalist as a journalist yes it's gonna be a cliche but Woodward, with what they did with the whole, um, all the president's men and the, the Nixon scandal, it's something that I look, in my generation, I'm not saying that the next generation will, but certainly the way that they exposed how a president had misused office and the way they had to go about it, there was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, there was no internet, they had to do it through real journalistic means and that's using a telephone, knocking on people's doors. From that point of view, if you're asking me about the greatest success story of journalism in my era, I'd have to say what Woodward and Bernstein did with the whole Nixon scandal. (laughs) 